We all love cycling, there's no doubt about it, and that's probably why you're here watching this video. However, it's not always sunshine, tailwinds, and KOMs. There are some things which we can end up really hating. So, here's my list of some things that I hate about cycling. There's too many rules about what you should and shouldn't do, which quite frankly should all be ignored. Being safe and comfortable is all that matters. Now, it's likely that we've all heard of the rules, an outdated set of so-called guidelines created by a previous generation of riders. All that needs to be remembered is that there are no rules. If you can enjoy the privilege of owning a bike or simply having access to one, then swing your leg over the saddle and just enjoy the freedom that two wheels can give you. Cycling can sometimes become too much about the numbers and then kill the very reason that we started in the first place. It's not always about who comes first, but who gets the most out of the journey. During a long block of training, it can feel like I've spent more time looking at my Garmin than I have looking at the landscape that I've been rolling through. Heading out on a ride without a Garmin, but being safe in the knowledge of a route that I know really well, can give me the headspace to unwind, decompress, and just enjoy the best of what cycling has to offer. For runners, it's a case of getting change, whipping on a pair of trainers, grabbing some water and hitting start on your smartwatch. Now, I don't think I need to go into too much more detail, but that process is 10 times simpler than the fiasco. That is choosing your kit, getting changed, making sure you have your keys, your money, your phone, your ride essentials, puncture repair kits, loading your map, checking the direction of the wind, making a drink, checking your bike is still working and still has air in the tires, all while hoping you don't get to the point of being about to leave and then needing to make an emergency dash to the toilet where you all but have to strip off again. It really can be a success just by getting out the door. You really don't need the latest gear. Great bikes and gear can be found secondhand with a sizable cost reductions. Don't forget, a full life cycle of a well-serviced bike is well over a decade. A good secondhand bike to get you going can be found for around 300 pounds. Now, if you need more advice on what to look for when buying a secondhand bike, then check out our guide, which I've linked down in the description below. The overall quality of more budget options is only getting better as trickle-down tech reaches those lower echelons. It wasn't that long ago that the vast majority of the peloton was racing on rim brake. So if it was good enough for them, well, it's definitely good enough for us now. Bonking. Need I say any more? Mechanicals. There really is no good time to have one, be it a puncture, skipping gears, rubbing brake pads, or a snap spoke. All of these little issues that can creep up on you can be incredibly infuriating when you're out on the bike. Of course, making sure that you get your bike serviced or stay on top of any little gremlins yourself will mean that mechanicals are less likely, but no amount of servicing can save you from a sharp thorn or a pesky little bit of glass. I love climbing. You may have guessed by my stature that that's where I tend to feel most at home. The feeling of dancing up a climb to get to the top to enjoy the view. Well, sometimes. Other days aren't quite so sprightly, which is why running out of gears is one of the most humbling experiences out there. Gurning your way up a climb, staring at your stem in pain, offers very little enjoyment. Either you need to revise your gear selection or just get a little fitter. The point still stands though, no matter the reason, running out of gears sucks. We've all been there. You're riding along, having a grand old time and ever so slowly, a new noise creeps into your ears. You're looking around, is it me? Yes, because you're by yourself. You stop pedaling, it stops. You carry on pedaling, the sound comes back. It must be your bottom bracket, or your spokes, or your pedals, or your headset, or your hoses, or your through axles. Quite frankly, it could be anything. Yet another joy of cycling. As with my previous point, if you can stay on top of servicing, hopefully these weird annoying noises should be kept at bay, to some extent. 
Now, I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with this one. In my early years of cycling, I was, of course, the slowest rider in the group. However, as annoying as it was, feeling like you're holding everybody back, for me, it was also a huge source of motivation to get faster. It meant I was digging as deep as possible to be as fast as possible. And I believe if you truly want to get quicker out on the road, then just ride with someone who will consistently and continually drop you. It may not be fun, but at some point, you will be able to drop them or at least hold their will. Sometimes it's not always about power zones and heart rate data. You just need to be able to go flat out, dig deep and find that extra level that you never knew you had. Again, need I say any more? A sensitive issue for sure. When you spend a long amount of time in the saddle and maybe haven't used enough or any chamois cream, you may fall victim to the very painful saddle sore. I find that they can also creep up after a period of time of not being on the bike and maybe you aren't quite conditioned to being in the saddle again. Of course, this is something that can be looked after. Simply apply a generous layer of chamois cream to the chamois in your shorts and this will most certainly help save you from this nasty injury. This one goes out to all the beginners who are finding their feet when it comes to riding clipless pedals. We've all been there. You're coming to a stop, maybe at a set of lights, you completely forget you're attached to your bike and all of a sudden you feel yourself falling in slow motion, usually to the enjoyment of the other road users that are around you. Happily, this only tends to happen once or twice before you very much learn your lesson. Forgetting to restart your Garmin. Now, I actually fell foul of this one pretty recently. I was 30 miles into a ride and me and my ride buddy had stopped for lunch at a cafe before continuing the next 30 miles of our ride. Only for me to realize with 10 miles to the end that I hadn't pressed start after we left the cafe, meaning the last 20 miles had gone unaccounted for. Schoolboy error. Now, this one is never fun, and it can be right for not being able to clip in, which is exactly why I taught myself how to track stand. The skill of being able to stay clipped in while staying still has saved me so many times. If there's one skill that's worth mastering, I'd actually say that it's this one. My only recommendation would be to start on some soft grass with a bit of an incline. Finally, the cost of it all. It's no surprise, but cycling is a pretty costly game. To even own or have access to a bike is a real privilege. I think that no matter what level of cycling you're at though, the cost of partaking in the sport can be quite grinding. It's very much the nature of the game, but I don't think it will ever become less annoying. So there we have everything that I find can be quite annoying about cycling. Of course, I've listed quite a few things and overall, well actually, I still absolutely love cycling. Let me know down in the comments though, is there anything that you find really annoying about cycling? I really want to hear, so do let me know. If you enjoyed the video, then please do drop it a like, subscribe to the channel for more content, and I'll see you again very soon.